Bless you and welcome to the Community Shall Be Restored Television Show. I'm your host, Prophet Cedric Banks, along with Prophet Sonetta Banks. We have a tremendous show for you today. We have some uh, outstanding guests for you today that's doing some great things out there in the community. And uh, we're just going to uh, allow them to introduce themselves now. They're to my, to my right. We're going to allow them to introduce themselves. My name is Coco. Um, it's, 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 it's real simple, Coco. <laughs> <laughs> the name is, is simple, but the, my, my gifts are sort of intricate and, um, you know, as God sees fit. But my gift is the gift of people in most platforms and a lot of different arenas. And I'm Stephen Dye, uh, the Executive Director of Detroit Magic Child Development, which is a youth organization providing uh, educational and uh, activities for the youth in the community. Okay, okay that's, uh, uh, that's outstanding. Now, you both, you, you, you got something great going on in the community that you got on uh, November, what, the 16th? Yes, sir. That you, that you have going on. And I think that is something that the community need to know about because it really appears to be a, a wonderful event. Can you all tell us that, whoever wanna go first? Stevie okay. can tell you all the details. Okay. Yes. okay. Well, this is, what, this is our first uh, black tie semi-formal gala. It's a fundraiser for, the, for our organization and uh, it, um, what this uh, gala is about is is raising funds in order to con continue the work that we do with the youth in the community, providing uh, tutoring, mentorship, leadership development programs, and uh, also trying to prepare them for the future. You know, um, in, in, in their growth and development. So you, so you, this is uh, also about leadership programs. Yes, it is. Okay, and in what area? Uh, what will the uh, people be learning in leadership? Well, the youth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. First of all, they'll learn how to be productive citizens in the society, how to do the right thing, you know. They, uh, uh, they learned, uh, they understand that uh, education is the most important thing that you can achieve, you know. Uh, with an education, it will take you a long way, you know. Right. Whereas if that, uh, and now, you know, the, the, the youth that we uh, deal with, they are low income and, 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 and underserved. So the programs that we provide, uh, they're, they're programs that they probably wouldn't get if we didn't uh, bring them into the community, to those youth, you know. And uh, they, uh, it, it's like a piggyback off of, the, off of the schools, you know, you know, homework assistance, whatever they're learning in school, we pick it back off. And, and uh, uh, assist them with their homework, uh, teach them about anger management and uh, uh, conflict resolution, how to resolve things peacefully and opposed to uh, violently. And what age group are the children? Between, yes. between ages of six and 17. Okay, that's good, that's good. Okay. Now, we have uh, Coco here for 105.9 FM, Mason and Coco in the morning. And uh, Coco, what's yes. your role? What's your role in this? We know you're an outstanding what comedian, uh, <laughs> an actress, uh, a talk show host. We we, we know you. I very, do it all. I, I do it very. I, I I do it all, and and I realize that you know too much is given, much is required. But when you ask God to um, enhance your territory and and to exalt you to a position where you can be a true, true servant, you have to be able to do and to serve. It is not a particular time, you know. God's time is not our time. 
you know, so whenever he calls you and say, hey, listen, um, I need you to, and I'm like, okay, so Steven and I have been friends a really, really, really long time, and they have always been very, very active in, our, in the community, so I know his passion, I know his commitment, I know what his goal is, and he's just not somebody that, that talks to talk, he walks to walk. So he's always involved with children. So he said, listen, we're doing a black tie event. You know, are you available? I said, give me the date, because you know I'm kind of busy. And I was available. So it was in divine order that I was available because I, I believe in children. And I believe that we plant seeds in children and those seeds grow. And we don't plant the seeds once they get here. We plant the seeds when the mother is carrying that child. It, it is a spiritual connection through that umbilical cord, what we impart into that child, the environment that that pregnant mother is in, and, and what we say to that child, and what's said in the atmosphere of that child, is absorbed into that child's spirit. So some people say, oh, my baby won't sleep at night, I don't know what's wrong with it. Well, what was going on in your life when you were carrying that child? Beautiful, beautiful, outstanding. You know, what, 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 what kind of man did you conceive this child with? Beautiful. So we don't think about it on that level. And then some people say, oh, my baby go to sleep and sleep all night. You, you, you know what, now, Coco, I'm going to say that. I done had all type of pastors and bishops on this show. But that was outstanding, what you just said, because I don't even hear them say stuff like that. But whatever environment that you are around, mm -hmm. when you carry in a child, that is the atmosphere that's going to go into the, into the mother's womb, into the child. Even then, you yes, see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Whatever environment yes. that you're around, mm -hmm. whatever you're exposed to. Absolutely. The, the child is going to be in the womb and catch that environment. Mm -hmm. So that was outstanding what you just said. Of course, because if, 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 if a person is addicted to drugs, it's fed from the mother to that child. But not only that, we put the blame on the mother. Oh, the mother was a drug addict or whatever. But guess what? The father, what was he doing? What was he using? What was going in his life? Because without the father's donation, we wouldn't have a child. Right. So all of those things go into play. So when you get a child that may be a little more active or has some issues going on, you have to have people that are willing to say, okay, well, let me talk to this child. Let me see what's going on. And it takes a certain kind of spirit, a certain kind of temperament, and a certain kind of person. And then what's being said to this child? Because, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to say this, Bishop. I'm just going to be real, real transparent. A lot of women talk better to their men than they do their children. They, they talk like, oh, they may, oh, this is my boo, I love him so much, and then turn right around and cuss their child out. Right. They'll let their man borrow their brand new car, and their man ain't got no license or nothing. Right. He'll borrow the car, ride right around in it all day, picking it up, smelling like reefer and everything. But they got a son that's 19 that's trying to go get a job who has a license, and he can't use the car. So I, I, I think it's a lot of things that go on in the community, and you reach them, and you gotta, you gotta, you got to be able to reach the people. If you got to go down in the trenches, the, the Lord, gutters. the Lord will right. give you that gift, though. Right. If yeah. if you really, really, really doing the Lord's work, He will give. I have to say, and this is for me, the Lord has given me a gift where I can go anywhere, anytime, any place, and talk to anybody. Right. And when you when you ask God, okay, God, what you what you want me to do? He said, listen. And, and God talks to you. He don't. He ain't a D dust and die or whatever. He talks to you right where you at. Right. He'll so, reach you right where you at. Right where you at. So right. when you ask him, he gonna tell you. He said, "Listen, your gift is to give to people. Whatever platform, whatever area, whatever needs to be done. I need you to work on this, and I need you to do this. And I know who you are. See, we want to fix ourselves." God knows who we are. And the edges on us that need to be smoothed, he'll smooth them. If you right. just stay in his space and, and keep praying, you'll find yourself, he'll smooth those edges and and and, and, and then hype, lighten your gift and, and everything. You're like, oh, okay, well, all I had to do was just humble myself and pay attention. And God got the rest. We want to fix ourselves. And you don't, you don't, you can't do that because you know, the hand of God got to fix you. God don't fix you, you ain't going to be fixed. It's, it's like you know, the hand of God don't fix you, you're not going to be fixed. Yeah. But, you know, you made a, uh, another great point, but I like Coco. You know, they'll, uh, but see, women, you know, there's a lot of women 
that want to be in relationships mm. and you know I listen mm. to you and Mason every morning pretty much <laughs> and they desperate to be in a relationship <laughs> and they will do anything to keep a man but see as a woman you know, this is some your your type of talk because I know you'll tell a woman this in a minute on on one hundred five point nine <laughs> that you gotta have some standards when when you're looking for a man when you're looking for a man to come in your life you gotta have some standards and you gotta hold that man to them standards. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> man, I enjoy you. I'm so happy to have you here. You know, I done had the mayor here, all the city council, all state representatives. Uh, the prosecutor, <laughs> I'm just so happy to have you here, you know, because I hear you get down every morning, you know. Well, you know what, I, <laughs> I, I, I get down because I think about when, 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 I'm, when I'm doing my thing on radio, it's, it's not just radio. I think about people like this, like Steven that's in the community and, and you know, he may have a, a young man that may have some issues and, and everybody else has, has cast this young man to the side. They may say, well, you know, he got a problem reading or he got a problem doing this and whatever. But it's something in Stephen that draws what everybody has discarded in that young man. Steve, will, he's able to go in and, and draw that out. And, and you'll see a young man, he may start off with some challenges at nine and then by the time he's 12 or 13, it's like, is that the same young man? He said, that's him. So you have to be able to have the gift of knowing what to do and when to do it and and how to do it and how to finesse and, and, and do it and that's one of the things that they do. They they have basketball and they have other stuff, but they do too. You know, um, nowadays, you know, because teachers and stuff have so many responsibilities, if a child is not here by that time, they say, Well the child got a problem learning or whatever. But everybody doesn't learn at the same pace. Right, right. It's like driving a car. Everybody got a license, but there's some folks I see on the freeway. I just want to pull over and let all hundred cars go by because that one person and upset the heart. I'm like, ooh, where they, where they right, going? Right, 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 right. They can't go no faster than nobody else. Right. So, to to have an organization like his that's in the community and of the community and and to have the young people that are involved, and then you get young people that go through the program and come back. Right. They come back to be a servant. They come back to offer the assistance. They come back and say, hey, you touched my life and you taught me how to be a man. You taught me how to so be a young So there man. is people that come through the program that do have success. So you don't see them come in one way, but then grow and develop and mature through the nurturing because they got to have the nurturing to grow. Oh yes. yes. They got to have the yes. nurturing and the nurturing yes. comes from here. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? They got to have the nurturing mm -hmm. because, uh, and that's how they grow because Absolutely. of nurturing. Absolutely. Because you got a lot of children in today's era is different from 30 years ago. Yes, it is. It, yeah. it, what, what makes it so different back then you got it from mama and daddy that was in the household 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. But a lot of mothers and things in, in, in today's generation, they're not giving it to their kids. They're not giving them that discipline, that knowledge, that wisdom. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and in today's era, you know, we don't, we don't have that. But we had it once upon a time. Yeah. And where the parents could discipline their kids and if they got out of order you remember the era coco you're probably from this era oh, yeah. uh, where where what you know you could be cutting up down the street oh and miss jenkins hand and miss jenkins or miss smith hand and by the time you got home oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by the time you got home you would get another one Ooh. but see that's Ooh. the era i come out of but but it's, it's it's so different now because a lot of a lot of single homes that have single parents both men and women the man may have to work a job and have he may right. have four children. So, you know, he, he may not see his children leave for school or come home from school. And by the time he get home, you know, they've eaten, they've gotten their clothes together or whatever. And as much as they can, they love the children, but they're not working to live an extravagant life or buy an extravagant vehicle. They're working to maintain. They're working to, to, to keep a roof over their head. They're working to pay their utility bills. They're working to do the things that are necessary to sustain this household. So it's some things that may fall through the cracks. It's some things that you may miss in your child's homework. So you say, you know what? 
the teacher said you're not doing good in school, you don't have a bad attitude, you're not disrespectful, I need to find somewhere that you can go in the evening that will focus on what the situation is. Somebody that I can trust, an organization and a group of people that's gonna wrap their arms around you and, and, and help you. Because it's, it's all an extension of, it's like a tree. We don't see the roots, but they're there. So you got the tree, and you got the limbs, and you got the branches, and you got the twigs. All of those are vital parts of that tree. When those parts start to die off, it's something wrong with those roots. So they usually cut that tree down because it's, it's, it's no good. It's rotten, it's, it's, it's infested or whatever. So you cut off, but when you got good roots, and you got a beautiful tree, and you got branches and twigs and limbs that are able to hold up whatever size of the issue that it may be, then you got growth in the community. You got positive young people. You got positive young people that go into productive citizens that, and, and I hear people say this all the time, I ain't got to worry about them now. You know, I ain't got to worry about them breaking in my house, and I ain't got to worry about whatever folks are always worried about. And you ain't supposed to be worrying no way, but that's a whole nother sermon. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother sermon. That's a whole nother sermon. Stephen, yes, sir. talk to us, man. Yes, sir. What are we, uh, is there hope for the youth? Because you work with them. Mm -hmm. And are you seeing any type of uh, uh, progress? And, you know, this is the vision that God has given you mm -hmm. and laid upon your heart mm -hmm. and things like that. So. Talk to us and tell us some, look right in that camera and tell those folks right out there in TV land uh, what, 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 what's going on. Well, Pastor, there is hope. Um, the only thing children really want to know is that you care for them, that you care about them. You know, a lot of them nowadays, they don't feel that anyone is on their side. There's nobody that, 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 that really want to take an interest in them. So when, and, and they're very honest and truthful, Pastor, yeah. with, their, with their feelings. If they know you don't care, they're going to come back and say, hey, hey, Coach Dad, you brought this guy in. He don't care about, he don't care about us. You know, he don't care if we, <laughs> if we learn. Be, be, be. He look at us this way, that way. You because know? they don't know if you truly care. They feel it. They, they know. feel it in and their heart. Absolutely. And they'll tell you, from, they'll tell you, you know, uh, honest, fair, and squarely, you know, that, hey, you know, they, they, they feel you. So all they want is to, is, is to, is to be loved. And, 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 and show that, and for somebody to show that they care, you know, and, uh, and that's what we do, you know. Uh, each and every day when they come in, you know, we have, uh, we, you know, we, we start our tutoring or, or mentoring session. If we have somebody come in, Coco been coming in and working with us off and on since the existence of the organization. And we've been around since 1998. Wow. Mm. And, uh, so she's been loyal and faithful. She'd come in whenever I called Coco. She'd come in, you know, if we have some type of special program or some type of activity or whatever, Coco would come in and talk to the kids and, and, and you know, just for them to just see her and be around, you know. Right, right. And that's amazing enough for them, you know. But well, we, well, first of all, Coco is a household name in the community. Yes, she on is. On 105.9. Mm -hmm. And she commands respect in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, you know, just if you turn on Mason and Coco in the morning from 6 to 10, they can easily get 200 <laughs> calls. 200 calls from around the city of Detroit. You know, so they are a very powerful, oh, a very powerful network. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And got a lot of people love her and respect her because you know, she is just, you know, from when I looked at her, listen to her, she can be charismatic when needed, she can be tough, she can be loving, she can be compassionate, she has a lot of those attributes, so she know how to reach the hearts of people. I done seen her, uh, I done seen her uh, handle Mason and Tuna, you know, and them two men right there, you know. <laughs> but, but I think the important thing, Bishop, is you have to live it. You have to live what you asking somebody to do. You know, if, if I say, okay, you know what, we're gonna go out here and, and we're gonna do this or whatever, and I'm standing to the side and I got my hands on my hips and I'm pointing and, and, and relegating and delegating or whatever, after a while, folks gonna say, well, she said, we was coming out here and it's hot and she ain't doing nothing but pointing up things. She ain't even got us no water. So after a while, the people that had the zeal and the energy to help you, they not looking at you like, she ain't doing she ain't doing nothing. So people know when I say 
that I'm going to be over at the Detroit Recovery Project. We're doing a food drive or we're doing a giveaway or I'm going to be at a, a sober event for women for Mother's Day. We're doing a wonderful event. People know if they come over the QBH, if they come to Detroit Recovery Project, if I say I'm at the football field at so-and-so, they come because if I say I'm going to be there, they be like, okay. Oh, she, yeah, she, and some people go like, I didn't really think, what you do, and, and it's always this, girl, what you doing over here, you know, when you're in the hood, I said, well, Jesus everywhere, right, Jesus right. said, he didn't draw no boundaries, we did, you know, right, right, you know, right. it's, 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 and it's funny, because we, we, we define ourselves by zip codes, well, I don't see zip codes, I see people that live in certain pockets of the community that need the same thing as other people that live in other pockets of the community. But but nobody pays attention to them. Nobody, you know, gives them the love and the nurturing that they need. They, they're quick to judge them and, and, and we real quick to judge folks. Oh my goodness, I don't even talk about that, Bishop. Right, we, right. We, oh, you? Mm. But you know, one, one, one thing I have discovered, there's a lot of people want to be a leader there's a lot of people want recognition, but to be a leader, you got to earn it. You got to show uh, the people out there in the community that you have earned it. You got to be willing to get into the trenches, in the gutters. The people got to see that. Mm -hmm. You Absolutely. see what I'm saying? The people and they got watching. To see, they and watching. You. And they it's watching. Not, you. It's not just the people that's that's real close to you that's watching you. It's somebody way, way, way off. Yeah. And, and you don't even, and you may see this person every now and then and speak to them. That's the person that's watching you the hardest. It's not the people that you have that are involved, hands on. It's somebody way down the street that's watching. They was, yeah, let me see what he about. Let me see, because he's talking this. Let me see, he's talking this stuff. He see if he really, really about it. Or if they stop and have a conversation with you. How do you talk to them? How do you speak to them? They see how you are in a big group. They see how you are when you do your show. But how are you one-on-one? -on -one? Right. How do you deal with them one-on-one? -on -one? What kind of dialogue and relationship do you have with them one-on-one? -on -one? And that's what people look at. You know, it's the, the, the words they with love and kindness have I drawn these. Are you, loved, are, you, are you loving this person? Are you kind to this person? Are you giving this person the time they need? And it may be the smallest thing to us and it may be the biggest thing to them. Right, and you know, you just said something tremendous because people are watching you from afar. Mm -hmm. Your circle, they already know what them. They know, they, they know already you. know what you're about, the yeah. people that's around mm -hmm. you every day. Mm -hmm. They already know what you're about. Mm -hmm. But the people that's on the outside, they're watching you oh because God. they want to see can do they want to come in the circle absolutely and be a part of absolutely. the circle absolutely but do you have enough skills to draw them on in mm -hmm. you see you got to have the skills to draw them on in though mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying in the wisdom yes to draw them on in and you can't draw them in with toughness and 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 and, 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 and boldness and all of that yeah if if that's needed at the time yeah you know of of what's taking place you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. but you have to be well rounded you, you see what I'm saying? You have to be well-rounded to draw them on in and things like that. Because those are looking, like you said, from afar. Those are people that watch you. And those are the people for, for me, and I, I always say jokingly, when I, when I go and, and I always tell, I go to a lot of different churches and I tell them, I say, I need you to write a note to my pastor and tell him where I was so he won't think I was playing church hooky. But, and, and they'll laugh, but I want to hear the person that is the shepherd. I want to hear his story. I want to hear, when, when I listen to T.D. Jakes and he talks about his relationship with his wife and you know never calling her out of her name and different challenges or whatever, we, want to, we see where you are now. We see how God is blessing you now. But to draw some people in, some people want to hear you know, when you went through your challenges. They want to hear that testimony. Right, right. They want to hear for, for, for some pastors, they want to know, some bishops. They yeah. want to know how you got there. Yeah. Yes. Because they, you got to show how you got there. Right? Yeah, because right. they, they, you know, you, you just know? can't say, I just, I just, God just dropped me out the sky. For some bishops and some pastors, you know, when they say, well, I went to prison for 13 years and, and so forth and so on, it's, it's somebody that's looking like, Wait a minute, hold on. He said he been to prison. I, I need to talk to him because I've been to prison too. What? What? Wait a minute. He, he met his wife. 
How old were you? Wow, they, they got married when they was 18. I met my, I got married when I was 18. So it has to be something, and it's a little thing to pull them in. And once you pull them in, they're going to bring some folks with them. Right, exactly. Steve, yes, sir. Um, when it comes to uh, drawing, drawing people in to, to, to work with our youth, um, the way I do it, Bishop, is uh, I just uh, I go out and I do my network. You know, I'm out in the community anyway. Yeah, you, you are. Know, I'm out in the community <laughs> anyway. So I'm always looking for something or somebody to come with that can bring something to the table with our youth. You know, and uh, uh, once uh, I bring them in and they get a touch of what we're doing for the youth, they're so long. That's all on. So the biggest thing and the biggest challenge is. See, let me, I'm gonna say this. Mm -hmm. You say once you bring them in and they see what you're doing for the youth, they sold on it. Yeah. Anytime you got something good and true and positive, you go always draw some people. Absolutely. Yeah. It may not be the amount you want, yeah. but it's gonna draw people oh, they gonna because it's real. Yes, they it's, gonna come. it's authentic, it's real. Absolutely. So God go send some people just because it's real. Absolutely. He probably sent more than that, but someone was rebellious. Yeah, they, they, were, were, they, were, they were disobedient. They were disobedient, they right, they, right, they, right, they, right. They, they were disobedient. They, 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 <laughs> they were disobedient. They were disobedient. That's right. disobedient. <laughs> but, but when, when, when Stephen tells you his life and his story, when and I recently went to uh, uh, his church for service, and to see him and his son in the choir stand singing, you know. You sing? Yes, sir. You know? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> when, but to see him and his son with they, you know, and, and, and all the men, and it was, it was, was it Father's Day? It was Father's Day. It was no, Father's Day. No, no, it wasn't Father's Day. It was, uh, was it the anniversary? Men's Day. It was, it was, it was Men's Day. Mm -hmm. So to see all the men in the choir stand with they, and, and all the men, and see him standing next to his son singing, I got so emotional because for a father and a son to be able to worship together. And I started laughing and I said, okay, you, you, you think you had everybody to beat you out when you walked in, just, just be cool and enjoy the service. But it, it touched me because you can follow his story. He's not just gonna tell you the story. You can follow the story. If, if he invites you to come over to his church, you can go over to his church. He's there serving. So it's, right. those are the necessary things. You gotta, you gotta be a servant. You gotta be willing to be a servant. We and got two know. minutes left. Stephen, take a minute, and I'm gonna take a minute to close us on out. What's up on your heart speaking? Okay. Be, because I'm gonna put you all, you all will be in the magazine Thursday. A okay. prominent magazine reaching. Amen. Uh, we'll tell you after this. Okay. okay. And Teresa, go give y'all articles. You know, I'm in a magazine every week. Me, you ever heard of Federal Prosecutor Mark McQuaid? Yes. She put Kwame away. Yes. Give her a big article on me and McQuaid. Uh, Duggan, if you got one, uh, you know, so take care of her and my man, Stephen. Okay. Go ahead, Stephen. Okay. Well, <clears throat> basically, this, <laughs> this event on November the 16th is an event uh, that uh, we're giving in honor of God and for the the things that he does for his for his youth and his children in the community through us. You know, God works through people. Right. Okay. Yes. yes. And so this event on November sixteenth is all about that in celebration of the Lord and his works, his good works to the youth in our community. So I'm just asking everybody to come out on November the sixteenth. We're at from six to nine at Northwest Activity Activity Center. I have my hostess here, Ms. Coco. She's going to be the host, and uh, I guarantee you, I got some other entertainment going on, and I guarantee you that uh, you all will have a, a great time. And Bishop and First Lady, I definitely want you all there. Okay? Thank you. Thank, yes, you. Thank you. Thank you. I've been your host today, Prophet Cedric Banks, along with Prophetess Donetta Banks, and along with Stephen Dye, Detroit Magic, and along with Coco. All right, we'll see you next Saturday right here on Comcast Channel 90 at 8 p.m.